evening to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Dearly beloved, I welcome all of you to our virtual Thanksgiving service in memory of all the staff members and all the old boys of our school whom we have lost during the last year. So to begin our Thanksgiving service this evening, Let's all join in the opening prayer. You are beneath me, Lord, you Dearly beloved, as I mentioned before, we are gathered virtually to remember all our loved ones belong to our St. Thomas's Prep family. We remember people who lived with us whose love we experience. We have their memory. All the fond and pleasant memories. Dear friends, memory is a precious faculty. It connects us with people and events that are no longer present to us. Someone we love dies, we feel the need to connect our lives with that of the disease. Here is where memory comes to our aid. As soon as the loved one dies, memory begins to work over time. However, at the same time, a cloud of grief descends on us. Grief is not a bad thing. In fact, 
it is good and necessary but it can be so painful that we may be tempted to suppress it however memory makes this almost impossible hence we may be tempted to also suppress our memories of the disease we should resist it dear friends we all want to be remembered even christians know that jesus too wanted to be remembered in his love for us jesus christ left us a special way of remembering him namely the holy eucharist he said do this in remembrance of me my dear friends and students our loved ones are never really lost never separated from us if we cherish their memory they become present to us they are not just a memory but a real presence a presence we feel rather than see when we remember them with love we are in communion with them when we finally accept our loved ones gone we are able to thank god for the gifts that they gave us through them this helps us to let go of negative feelings such as anger and guilt in their place come fond memories to cherish memories which like good wine improve with time so my dear teachers all boys and students and parents one of the ways of repaying our debt we owe to our loved ones to our dear teachers and our old boys who are no longer with us is not to forget them but remember them we continue to reap a harvest from what they sowed while among us there are people whose impact is almost greater in death than in life as helen keller once said all that we de- love deeply becomes a part of us so with this note let's begin this thanksgiving service in memory of our loved ones who are no longer with us and may i invite our chaplain father andrew devadasan to pray for them I am the resurrection and I am the life he who believes in me though he die yet shall he live and who lives and believes in me shall never die let us pray bless those who mourn eternal god with the comfort of your love that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given may their memories become joyful that is enriched with friendship and their lives encircled by your love Amen. In our memories, the dead 
become alive. And we remember. Mr. Peramuni. Mr. SDS Sena, the Mrs. Damianti Vikramaratna, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Mr. Trevin de Silva, Mrs. S. Suresh Chandra. Mr. Kamal Ratwat, Mr. Collins Ravindran Swamidasan, Mr. Lakshman Senevi Ratna. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mr. Randy Rajaratna, Mr. Kanishka Pereira, Mr. Faslin Gafur, Mr. Brandon Shamil Nanayakar, and all others whose names may not be here. May their souls rest in peace, rise in glory. May the light perpetual shine upon them. And we pray. May God in his infinite love and mercy bring the whole church living and departed in the Lord Jesus Christ to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of its eternal kingdom. Amen. Isaiah 25, 7 to 9. On this day, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
Sad news of the sudden passing away of Mrs. Suresh Chandra on the 10th of this month came as a big shock, not only to those who knew her personally, but to all of us who at some time or the other over the years gone by had the good fortune of being closely associated with her at St. Thomas's Prep School. During her long and illustrious career, spanning 30 years. Mrs. Sure Chandra joined St. Thomas's Prep School in the year 1986 as an assistant librarian. In the year 1990, she was appointed as a Buddhism teacher and rose to be the class teacher of grade 8A. She continued in this position until her retirement at the end of 2016. In addition, to teaching Buddhism, she also taught health as well. She was a teacher in charge of cricket and the Interact Act Club. She excelled in both and worked tirelessly. Mrs. Suresh Chandra was solely instrumental in taking Buddhist students to the Palvata Temple during Vesak and a key figure in organizing the Poson Sil campaign. She took a very keen interest in ensuring that these two programs continued without any difficulty or problems. She was a very simple, humble, and a dynamic person who would always go out of her way to help anyone who needed any assistance. She had a good sense of humor and was a fun-loving person. She genuinely loved her students and always made sure that they excelled not only in their studies but also in shaping their character. She was beautiful both inside out and a wonderful soul, fondly known to one and all. <clears throat> a very courageous lady, she faced any problem with boldness and smartness. Mrs. Suresh Chandra was responsible in organizing the annual prize giving and sports meet very successfully each year due to her meticulous planning and personal involvement, never leaving anything to chance. She had a great impact on the school where she always went out of her way 
and help everyone from the primary to the middle and upper school when she got ill a few years back she never gave up but fought with great courage until she breathed her last yet another victim of the dreaded pandemic her passing away has left a huge void to all of us may she attain the supreme bliss of nirvana Day was a teacher who served St. Thomas's Preparatory School from 1996 to 2021 January. She served the school dedicatedly for 25 years. She was teaching in grade one and two classes. Miss Dummy was a picture teacher model. She would drape her sari smartly, wear a nice conde, a top knot. And walked smartly. The boys loved her. She was a soft spoken lady. She never got angry and raised her voice. In the mornings, I would find many boys standing around her table talking to her. She would get the students to complete their work. Never a hard word, but in a loving, tender manner. She would help the little boys to do their work. Many of her students would recall her loving nature, her gentle words, and the beautiful smile in her face. The patience she had was immense. I wouldn't know how she did it. She never raised her voice, but calmly handled the boys in care. She always dressed, addressed her students as Puta, which touched many boys. Every morning she would walk smartly, greeting everyone with a smile. She was friendly with everyone in the staff. Miss Dami, you have touched many lives with your gentle ways. We love you and will miss you. Those we love can never be more than a thought away. For long as there's a memory, they live in our hearts to stay. Yes, Miss Dummy, you will be in our hearts forever. May your soul rest in peace. Thank you. I'm so honored to speak about our dear colleague and friend, Trevin, today. I met Trevin for the first time in church back in 2014, but I barely knew him back then. Trevin joined prep school in 2015 to assist in organizing the Thomian Walkathon. Again, he rejoined prep in 2017 and 2019 to help out with two more walks organized by the school. He was a very cheerful person and he always used to wear a bright smile on his face. In no time, he became friends with almost everyone at work. He had a habit of speaking with everyone regardless of their background or status. He also had a good interpersonal skills and he coordinated and worked well with the staff and the old boys. Over the years, Trevin and I became close friends. He used to call me Aki, and he was more like a brother to me. I used to meet him at work as well as in church. After work, he used to walk with me to Kolupitiya Junction, and we used to hang around and talk with each other even on Sundays after church. Trevin used to visit our home whenever he came by to drop his aunt at a salon nearby our place. He had a good sense of humor and he loved to keep us entertained with many interesting facts and stories. And there were so many co good qualities in Trevin. Some of them are, uh, he was always willing to help anyone 
and at most times he went out of his way to help. And over the past seven years, he has helped me a lot in many ways. Whenever I had an issue or wanted his opinion on certain matters, he was always there to guide me. And Trevin was always made, made it a point to keep in touch with everyone. Even after he left Trev, Trevin used to come and visit us just to catch up with us and have a chat. Even during the lockdown, he used to call us quite often to check on us. He was a devout Christian. He served the Lord with much commitment and joy. He never missed church on Sundays. And Trevin used to share a daily devotional message with more than 100 people, and he's been continuously doing it for several years. His untimely passing was a great loss for me, as for many of us. We will miss your smile, your laughter, and the wonderful advice you gave us. Although you are no longer with us, all the memories and the times we had with you will remain in our hearts forever. It was truly a blessing to have you in my life, Trevin. May you rest in peace. Farewell to my friends by Ravindranath Thakur. It was beautiful as long as it lasted the journey of my life. I have no regrets whatsoever save the pain that I'll leave behind. Those dear hearts who love and care and the heavy with sleep ever moist eyes. The smile in spite of a lump in the throat and the strings pulling at the heart and soul. The strong arms that held me up when my own strength let me down. Each morsel uh, that I was fed was all full of love divine. <clears throat> At every turning of my life, I came across good friends. Friends who stood by me even uh, when time raced by. Farewell. <clears throat> Farewell, my friends. I smile and bid you goodbye. No, shed no tears, for I need them not. All I need is your smile. If you sp feel sad, think of me for what, I, what I'd like. But you, live, but you live in the hearts of those you love. Remember then, you never die. The members of the prep. St. Thomas's Preparatory School All, Boy, All Boys Union uphold in our thoughts and prayers our departed brothers. Mr. Randy Rajaratna, Mr. Kanishka Pereira, Mr. Fazlin Gafur, Mr. Brandon Shamil Nanayakkara, Mr. Kamar Ratvate, Mr. Collins Ravindran Swamidasan, Mr. Lakshman Seniratna, and all the alumni of prep school who have been called to eternal rest and their families and give thanks that they were part of and uh, part of and enriched the prep school community on their shown sojourn on earth cheer cheer prep school boys for the games we played together played with whim in the sunshine dry no less in the rainy weather we look forward to the days when we will once play together in the sunshine bright by the rolling billows. May they rest in peace. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 15. Reading from verses 33 to 41. The death of Jesus. At noon, darkness came over the whole world until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. 
Someone ran with a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn into two forms, top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely, this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalena, Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up to him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord. Hold us in the palm of your hand, Lord, that we may see clearly the way forward. In your name we pray. Amen. We are gathered at a very difficult time in the lives of everyone. There is no one who has not been challenged by the goings on in our lives, in our nation, and around the world. Prepites usually gather at enjoyable occasions. And we mark those occasions to know that we are able to share lighter moments in our lives. But on this occasion, we are joining one another, probably across the world, to pay tribute to those who once a part of our family. They will always remain in our family. Even if they slip out of our memory, yet they will remain as part of our family because we believe that they are part now of the communion of saints. We thank God for their lives among us because of every aspect of their lives that we can remember. We thank God for them because they were just like us. They knew what was good, they knew what was bad, they knew how to get up when they fall, and they knew how to run when it, need, it was needed. So they shared life with us. And on this occasion, we are more closely knit because we feel it. Or we want to feel. These are not feelings that we want to disregard, but ones that we want to go through. It's painful. Because we are talking of people who have impacted our lives in so many ways. And 
no matter how hard we try to pay tribute to them, we cannot exhaust our words in saying how thankful we are. Reflecting on our readings, since these were hard days for all of us, I found that we were looking for consolation. And in the texts of our scriptures, the texts from our different faith, the experiences that we have gone through with pain previously, whether it served us as a means of dealing with the pain and the agony and the trauma that we are going through now. And so where do we turn to? We can't turn to one another because we are all in the same boat, asking the same questions, going through the same pain and the same trauma. So we then need to turn to a more tangible way of dealing with our pain and our anguish. What is difficult today is that we can't get close to the ones who are suffering because we are kept apart. We can get infected. So even a loved one who is facing the infection has to be separated from us. That's not the way that we are used to caring for one another. So we are learning in the hard way. to try and cope with pain and anguish in absence. But we know very well that only if we face it, we see it, we touch it, that we can come to terms with it. Therefore, the pain is severe. The parting is far more difficult. We cannot be there. We can't say our final goodbyes in the way that we want to. We are prevented. And we find it difficult to accept. Because we want to say it the way we want to do it. And we can't. We'll never be able to come to terms with it. And so we have to then turn to the strength that we can draw from the scriptures. And here we draw from the scriptures we heard read for us this evening. Death is that stark reality that we face today. And death becomes the very part of our lives that we have to deal with. But the 
reading from Isaiah tells us that death will be swallowed up forever. In our understanding, death swallows up everything. Here, death will be swallowed up. To the point that we will experience a presence that comes from God alone. It must have been difficult times, like for us today. And the community must have been asking difficult questions. We have no one to turn to. And we are grateful that these words have been written for us. But as we go through this time of turmoil in our heads, that we can find strength in these words. Suffering is real. Suffering will always be there. We can't ask for suffering to be taken away. It's part of our lives. But we have been given the cross so that we can throw ourselves and our trauma and our pain and the anguish of this world to the cross. It's not that we are running away from it. We face it. But for us who have to continue our walk of faith and in our lives, we are able to project, to throw our lives, frustrations, difficulties to the cross. A Kenyan prayer and blessing makes people physically move their hand at the words, all our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the works of evil we send to the cross of Christ. And finally, all our hopes and the hand moves differently, we set on the risen Christ. So in the midst of the hopelessness, the brokenness of the world, we have the possibility of clinging onto the hope that comes to us in the resurrection. So we transform that which is difficult for us onto the very cross that carried the pain and the suffering of this world. And so it is there for us today. We can't forget, but we can transfer our pain to the cross that has been offered for us. Let us do that because it helps us as a means to transform 
our pain and our suffering and our trauma onto the one who has suffered before us. And so God gives us that opportunity. Take it. We also have, for those who have gone before us, an understanding of the communion of saints. And we thank God for that. While we transfer our pain and our anguish on the cross, we are reminded that those who have gone before us are still with us because they are now part of that great cloud of witnesses. And so we have a day to celebrate the saints. And we have a moment every day to remind ourselves that here is the communion of saints. So yes, they have slipped away from our physical sight, but they enjoy that fellowship, and we in turn enjoy that fellowship with them, simply because we are knit together in that one fellowship, which we call the saints. May God strengthen us at this time that is so very difficult to enable us to draw, not for ourselves alone, but first for ourselves and then for one another, because together we need to make this journey. Those who we have remembered this day, and also Nuresh Rajapaksha, who passed this morning, the son of Indrani Pereira, a teacher of prep school. We give thanks to God for each and every life that we have remembered. Because God is big in us to accommodate all of us. Our pain and our sorrow, our frustrations, our difficulties and the works of evil to transform it into good. May God encourage us, strengthen us, because we are all together in pain. There are none of us who are free of it right now. But may we find solace in one another's scriptures and in a common journey that we walk together because we are knit in Christ Jesus our Lord, in the communion of saints. Amen.
as the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives away and the mountains fall into the art of the sea. Almighty God, we know that everything is in your sovereign control. We ask that you keep this coronavirus from continuing to spread. We pray for all those who are affected by the coronavirus through illness, isolation, or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. We very specially pray for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from COVID-19, the elderly and elderly people with chronic health conditions, for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the doctors, nurses, and all medical and healthcare workers who are on the front lines of the battle against COVID-19. Cover them with divine protection and give them the, pump, the double portion of your strength as they, as they care for the sick, as they expose themselves to the virus risking their health and the health of their families. Multiply their supplies so they have the protective items needed to safeguard themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our government, that they may set aside political gains and work in harmony for the government, common good. Help them to listen to the cries from the grassroots, that their hearts may burn with compassion on the plight of the people. Enable them to make wise and just decisions, choosing public health over private profit, choosing life over death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as families adjust to everyone being at home, as business and schools close, we ask that you guide people in their new realities. Help all our parents as they care for their families while working from home. Give spouses grace for each other. Prompt worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children. It can be scary and overwhelming, not knowing how bills and obligations will be met or not to be able to provide for their families. We with all the families in this time of need and provide for them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our dear children as schools are closed and they are doing online classes for almost one and a half years. We pray for them as they are not able to come to school, learn together and play with each other. We pray that our children will find creative ways to learn and experience the beauty of all you have created. Give them the wisdom that they need to continue their online learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in how you have guided and equipped people in their jobs and have provided in the past. Sustain all the workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. As people feel financial strain due to the uncertainty, Bring them comfort and peace, reminding them that you are there for them. Provide for them in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who follow social distancing, wearing masks, frequent hand washing, and all other safety precautions to avoid, avoid spreading the virus and halt infections. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may overcome together, working to control and eliminate the spread of the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With sadness, we remember all those in our prep school community who have lost their lives due to the coronavirus, pandemic, and other illness. Very especially remembering our, our members of the staff Mr. Peramuna, 
Mrs. Damianti Vikramaratna, Mrs. Savitri Suresh Chandra, Mrs. Sena Deva, Mr. Tervin De Silva, and the, and the old boys, Ms. Ranjit, Mr. Randy Rajaratnam, Mr. Kanishka Pereira, Mr. Brandon Nanyakara, Mr. Kamal Ratwatta, Mr. Collins Ravindran, Mr. Fastin Bakur, and Mr. Ratneresh Rajapaksha. We thank you for their lives. We pray that you will console and strengthen their families and loved ones, loved ones in this time of grief. Help us to strengthen our faith in your son who died for us and rose again in glory that we might share in his victorious life. Amen. <clears throat>
throw your hand and the worries of this world. If you have a cross, to the cross. If not, out of your window. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the works of evil we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Christ, Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. We have come to the end of our virtual thanksgiving service in memory of our loved ones who belong to PrEP family. So, as the headmaster of PrEP school, I sincerely thank our Bishop, Right Reverend Dushant Rodrigo, for accepting our invitation and sharing the message of hope with us this evening. And I owe my gratitude to our chaplain, Father Andrew Devadasan, for offering a prayer for the bereaved. And also a special word of thanks to the executive committee of the All Boys Union of our school for coordinating with us in organizing this Thanksgiving service. And also all those who led the worship this evening, our own teachers, all boys and students, who conducted the service. And I also thank our choristers for singing so beautifully. And special thanks to Sanchita who trained them. And I need to thank Stefan De Silva, our staff member and an old boy for coordinating everything this evening and for Miss Nipuni as well. So thank you and God bless you. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's all join in singing the final hymn. Father, hear the prayer we offer. <laughs> 